Hi, how you guys doing today? This is William Myers from Manus Outdoors, and today we're going to be kind of revisiting the last video I did on the UCO candle lantern. And what we're going to be doing today is we're actually going to be showing you how to reproduce your own candles for the UCO candle lantern. And the reason for that is, is like I said in the last video, there's tremendous benefits to burning beeswax candles. Um, they burn longer, they burn hotter. You know, watch the other video if you uh, if you haven't already. But they can be rather on the pricey side. So. I'm going to show you guys how to reproduce your own with a urethane mold. So stay tuned. Alright guys, so the things that you're going to need to start this project out with is a roll of duct tape or Gorilla Tape. This is a 2 inch flexible PVC cap. You probably could get away with a 1.5 inch. I went ahead and went with 2 just to be safe. Your mold is going to be a little bit thinner, but that in the long run could be actually a good thing because you're going to be able to flex it and bend it to pop your candles out. Uh, the two inch mold is is pretty stiff pretty durable but i'm still able to get the candles out but i digress <clears throat> a two inch pvc pipe they sell these in two well at least my uh store sold this to me in a two foot section so i didn't have to go ahead and buy a uh, a whole eight foot section of this a pretty rather small self-tapping screw and if megan could get kind of a zoom in on that you don't want anything too wide because we're going to actually screw the candle to the mold with this. And if you have anything too wide, you're going to bust the candle, obviously. So nothing really too huge. And last but not least, a beeswax UCO candle. And the reason why I got the beeswax UCO candles and not just go ahead and go cheap and get the, the regular candles that come with it is it's a different design. Paraffin burns faster and under lower temperatures than beeswax does so the beeswax candles is actually a different design so all right guys so optional equipment for this is a tape measure and a sharpie and the reason why i say optional is because you could eyeball this it doesn't really have to be precise and in fact uh in as far as the mold goes the pvc pipe some flaws actually help you put the mold together so those are optional a multi-tool and i'm going to be using a dremel today because i have one and it makes this a heck of a lot easier. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and start the first line here. Like I said, this doesn't exactly have to be the straightest thing in the world. I, in fact, I just hit my finger. <laughs> it's not going to be the straightest thing in the world, no matter what. It's fabulous. Uh-huh. It's not straight at all. It's super. <laughs> you really <laughs> are killing me right now. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and cut this down the line. This dribble's going to start up, so if you want to, go ahead and turn your uh, volume down on your speakers. It's snowing. It's okay, you just party with Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> Word of caution, this stuff actually does create uh, a fine particle of silica. So, I mean, it's not exactly the best thing to breathe in the world. Yeah, fa face masks are pretty nice out. So. Yeah, you gotta breathe that stuff in for years for it to actually affect you really hard. Alright guys, so next what you're gonna do is just kind of eyeball the middle of this and put your screw. This is why you have a self-tapping screw. And just kind of like I said, eyeball the middle of this. Just start putting that in. You're screwed. We'll go ahead and send this all the way to the head of the screw.
Perfect. Just all right. Now for the UCO candle. What the, it comes with, they just kind of pour these things in a form, and they have a metal rod that comes through the middle of it, and then they take it off the form. So that way they can just put these pre-made wicks in, and sometimes these pre-made wicks are actually made with paraffin. I don't know if this is or not. Can't tell. But go ahead and throw that to the side after you pull that off, and conveniently, the bottom of it has a hole in it. Just put that right in the screw hole, put that hole right on top of the screw and screw that down. Now this is where you kind of want to be careful because you don't want to go too far down and too hard because you don't want to strip this out, bust the candle. Just wait until it's kind of finger tight. And what I do is I kind of get the beeswax heated up with my fingers and cover that top hole up. Alright guys, well I hope you can see that right there. The hole on the top is now closed out. Just pushed with some pressure with my finger on the top. And that's holding in there pretty good. Like I said, you don't want to over tighten this. Alright, so now what we do is we actually measure the tube with the bottom part. And what I do is I overlap a little bit because you can always have this pipe being too big. You, you know, you can't add to this pipe once it's cut, so. Alright, so let's go ahead and mark it about, let's say, two, two and a half inches from the top. Right about there. Then what I do is I just go from that mark and I hold my pin up against it and I just roll it against it. Great's a pretty even line. Like I said, this doesn't have to be exactly even anyway. Not too bad. And then cut that out. So there it is cut, and obviously this could be definitely another mold, so don't throw that away. Hang on to that. If I can hang on to it. I'm gonna... Get the table cleared off here. Now you kind of want to get that dust, that silica, and the other cuttings out of the middle of the mold, you don't want that in there. Kind of wipe off the top of the mold. Obviously you can see that that's not perfectly straight and that's fine, that doesn't matter. As long as it's good enough. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape up the top part of the mold itself. You want to kind of get this tight. You don't want to have any leaks. We're going to seal the seams up, but still, it starts here. Getting this tight. All right, there we go. And then just where we cut down the middle, we're going to actually tape those seams up so that they don't leak once we pour this polyurethane in, or the urethane, sorry it's not polyurethane. Once we pour this urethane in, we don't want any leaks.
All right, guys, so the last step here is, first of all, loosen up this clamp that's around the flexible cap. And then throw in the candle in the PVC pipe. Itself. All right, guys, so once you got this seated and all together, the first thing you're going to do is you're actually going to look into the mold itself to see if the candle is touching the side of the, the wall of the pipe itself. Because obviously if that is what's happening, you're not <laughs> going to pour a very good mold. So you just kind of adjust things so that candle is as far in the middle as you possibly can get it. And there you go, that's not bad. Just took a couple of pries and pulls. Alright guys, so the equipment that you're going to need for the next step is a scale, something that's going to be able to get you an approximate weight of the product that you're going to be using. And the product that we are going to be using is from SmoothOn, and it's PMC744. It's a urethane. They have several other products that you can use, but this is what I found to be the best that doesn't need a vacuum chamber. And what I mean by that is a lot of mold... Uh, substrates that you use you're gonna have to put it in a vacuum vacuum it up and then let it sink down and obviously I'm not set up for anything like that it's not like this is my profession but they have several products that you can use that does not require a vacuum and this is one of them so other equipment is something to mix in and something to stir with and I'm just gonna use butter knives I'm sure my wife won't mind right uh -huh. <laughs> let's some more butter knives right I'll get some more you can use obviously paint stirrers, sticks, whatever. Alright guys, so we're going to start out by turning our scale on here. Make sure it zeroes out. We're going to tear that off there right just like that. Alright guys, both part A and part B need to be stirred very well before you pour them. And if you're choosing to go with this product, part A is two parts, part B is one part. Alright guys, so what I'm going for is a total of six ounces for this mold. And part A of this compound is two parts, and part B is one part. So the math there is very simple nice even round number so what we're going to do is four ounces of part A and two ounces of part B. Once I start getting close, I slow it down. Oh, there we go, four ounces right there. You want to be as precise as, pro as possible with the, these products so it sets right. You got to give part B a good stir. Alright guys, so like I said, two ounces of part B, equaling six ounces by weight. Getting close, slow it down. And there we go, six ounces. All right, so let's give everything a nice stir. Try to scrape the walls as much as you can with this. Making sure everything is really nice and mixed is gonna better your chances for success for this, that this is gonna set up right. Now this only has a pot life of 15 minutes. I mean, you do have time 
but you don't want to walk away from this. Alright guys, one thing that I forgot to show you guys was that we need a straight pin, just a regular straight pin for sewing. And you want to put that right where the candle hole, the you want to put that right where the wick hole is going to be. And you want to raise that and keep it raised about an inch or so. Because that's actually going to be the base for our mold. And it's going to be our wick hole. This is what's going to be called actually a self-wicking mold. So I hope you can see that pin in there. Alright guys, just kind of giving this a final scrape down and stirring it up real good again. And we're ready to pour. And what I've found that works the best, and what the, the product company actually suggests, is a very slow pour in one spot. You kind of just want to let the urethane find its own way. You don't want to be pouring this all around in circles or anything like that. And for this mold, if you follow the directions that I'm doing, six ounces is going to be plenty by weight. You just let that fill all the way to the top of that straight pin. No need to be in a, any kind of a hurry. Like I said, let the urethane find its own way. That way you won't have any gaps or holes or anything like that. And what I do is I let it come right to the bottom of that straight pin. The reason for that is it gives me a divot in my mold as well as my wick hole. So I, I, it's easier for me to actually start my wicks. Alright guys, so the good thing about using the PMC 744 is that it's a very strong mold. It's really resistant to tearing. The bad thing is that it has a longer cure time. This is going to take about 16 hours to cure versus some of the other products from Smooth On. It has a way less cure time. But like I said, there's good, good things and bad things. But I'm not going to make you wait 16 hours. I've actually done another one. So I went ahead and I pulled out the straight pin from there. And we're going to go ahead and demold this now. So one of the first things we want to do is we want to remove the bottom screw from the candle itself. I'm going to take that pretty much all the way out. <clears throat> Alright, so let's get this screw all the way out. Really windy today. I followed somebody's advice and actually put a band aid on top of my mic on the camera so it's really windy out I hope it doesn't bother the camera I hope this works because I've been having some real issues with that so we're loosening up the clamp that's around the PVC cap <clears throat> and then we're going to and take the PVC cap off and this can be a bit tricky just keep going you'll hear you'll actually hear the mold coming off of the rubber itself. There we go. And there's going to be some trimming involved once you get done. And there's the bottom part. Got to remove the duct tape from here. And once I deep mold this, I actually just throw the duct tape right back on. It's not like it's bad or anything like that. It's going to work for your next mold. And uh, if you're actually going <coughs> to be using this lantern a lot, and you're actually going to be using candle, uh, beeswax candles in your kit a lot, which I do, just the beeswax candles alone without the lantern, many uses for them. <coughs> you're going to be wanting to make a, a little bit more than one mold. You know, making one mold and then putting a beeswax candle in it. 
waiting three or four hours for that candle to, to cool, which we're going to be going through here in a minute. It's just, it's just better to make two, three, four molds. The product that you're going to get, it's about $25 for that mold kit that I just used. And you're going to get at least four or five, maybe even six molds out of that if you keep making molds. All right, so just go ahead and get this PVC pipe off of here, which can be a bit cantankerous. All right, guys, so let's get to work on taking the PVC pipe off the mold itself, which if you don't use any kind of a mold release chemical, it can be a bit hard to do so, but it comes off, trust me. There's that side. Believe it or not, the opposite side is actually kind of harder to take off. Like I said, if you use some kind of mold release, it's way easier to get this stuff to come off. I suggest you do. I just I haven't picked up any yet. There we go. So like I said, there's going to be some trimming involved. You just kind of pick off whatever you want. It's not necessary to do so. Just kind of, if it, if it gets in the way of how the, the mold itself is going to stand upright, then definitely get in there and get that out of there. But it's going to be, what needs to be trimmed is going to be so thin that you can just pick it off. All right. That's all I really care about right now. Now, if you could see right where the candle is, I have a thin layer of urethane that needs to come off. You can leave a little bit of it there so you know where your fill line is, but the majority of it you're going to want to go away. Like I said, you can just pull that right off. All right, let's go ahead and get working on getting this candle out of here. It shouldn't be too awful hard. It should just kind of pop out. Just pop right out. There you go, you hear that pop? <clears throat> okay, so once you make the mold, this is one thing that commonly happens. Once you actually make the mold, it sticks, it adheres to that candle so much that when you pop it out, you'll actually break a little piece of the candle off. This is no big deal. Just get in there with your finger and get that scraped out. It can be used again just melts right back down, just beeswax. Just get in there and make sure you get that all cleaned out so you can start pouring. Now if this seems like a pretty tough project and not worth your time, you know I could probably see how some people would say that, but if you're going to be using this a lot and it's something that you're really interested in, this isn't really that hard of a thing to do. Plus, it's going to save you a lot of money. After I make three sets of candles, even at buying it at $10 a set, I'm going to pay for the expense of making the mold with the materials I made to make the mold and the mold itself. And then I can start making candles for 
by my figures, around 50 cents to a dollar a candle, depending on how much beeswax is at the time. It actually fluctuates. So get in here and clean this up a little bit. And we're gonna call that good. All right, so the bottom of the mold here is where we put our straight pin at. And I don't know if you can see that on camera, but we pulled the straight pin out. And that, like I said, that gives us a little divot in the mold itself from the head of the, the pin itself. And it gives us a small pin hole into the silicone, uh, ur urethane actually, I'm sorry, the urethane itself. And the reason for that is we're going to stick a needle in here and thread this mold. Alright guys, so we got our urethane candle mold all ready. It's all trimmed up, ready to go. And our empty mold ready for another casting. Part two of this video is going to be me showing you how to actually thread the urethane mold because it's a self wicking mold. We're going to go through that in part two as well. And how to pour candles and the finished product. This has been William Myers from Manus Outdoors. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, I appreciate it if you press subscribe. It's right there. Little red button. Can't miss it. Liking my video helps me out a lot. Appreciate all your views, comments, and support. Hopefully, we'll see you out in the woods. Which, in the long run, in the long run, in the wrong run, Raggy, Jesus. And last but not least, <laughs> you didn't drop the candle. And last but not least, <laughs> <laughs> okay. The optional equipment for this is a tape measure and a sharpie. And the reason why they're op optional, the reason why they're <laughs> optional, I say, good fellow. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> and let's redo that one. Yeah. Okay, and the optional equipment that... Three, two, one. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Stop laughing! <laughs> optional. The optional. Ermagerd! 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 Candle mood! Ermagerd, American candle! ...that you see here, and that's going to be able to weigh out approximately... <laughs> Approximately. 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 By proxy, approximately. Okay. Three, two, one. All right, guys. So the next equipment that you're gonna need for. Three, two, one. For more. What is that? So what I'm going for is two. He's like a zombie. Zombies from Zombies. Yeah, I got you. I know, Crazy Dave. Yeah. Hold it up. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going for is a total of six ounces for this mold. And if <laughs> the wind is like, no, you're not. <laughs> you shall not film. Put the duct tape there on the corner. Yeah. So this has been William Myers from Millionaire Millionaire Take two. <laughs> <laughs>